Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to be creating concentric shapes in Illustrator. Sadly, not quite as easy as it might be, but I've got a whole series of techniques for you to create concentric shapes, concentric rectangles, circles, and rounded rectangles in Illustrator. And we're going to start with circles because there's a tool that will do the circles for us. Over here in the line segment tool group is a tool called Polar Grid. The Polar Grid tool gives us concentric circles and lines dividing them. We just need to tell it what we want. I'm going to click on the tool to target it and then click once in the document to open up the Polar Grid tool options. Now you can also get to that by just double clicking on the tool. This will give you the ability to set up your polar grid and the default size is actually the width and height of the finished object. I'm just going to put 200 and 200 here because we're going to be working with vectors so we can infinitely scale this anyway. The concentric dividers are the number of circles and if you set it to zero you're going to get one circle. And so if we have it set as it is here to five we're going to end up with one circle in the middle and then five more, so six in total. So for example if we wanted ten then I would just type nine in here, one in the middle plus nine extras. I don't want it to be skewed at all, I want these to be perfect circles so I'm just going to leave the skew at zero percent. Now the radial dividers are the lines that go through the circles. So if you've got circles here, the lines are going to go through. And we don't want any, basically, because we just want concentric circles. But say you make a mistake and you leave a number in here. Well, it's not all game over. So I'm actually going to leave in my 20 and just ignore that for now. And we're going to see how we'd get rid of them if we made a mistake. I'll just click OK. And that gives me my shape, my polar grid. And this is... 10 concentric circles plus the dividing lines that we didn't want but we got anyway because I didn't turn them off. When we go to the layers panel and open up this group here you'll see that the lines are all in a group all by themselves so it's very easy to locate them here in the layers panel and turn them off and in actual fact we can pick this up and just put it on the trash can. And here are our concentric circles. Now if you don't want them in a group that's easy just select the group here and go and choose object ungroup and you can do that until ungroup is no longer an option right now they're just in a group so this would be a single group of all of our 10 circles and they're evenly spaced and because they're paths we can also make the line weight larger so I'm just increasing the stroke width and all of them are increasing so that's how you get concentric circles in Illustrator I'm just going to bring the stroke down and tuck these away for now Now let's have a look at rectangles because the situation's different with them. So let's go to the rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw out a rectangle. Notice that I don't have a fill, I've just got a stroke. Now you might think that the repeat transform tool is going to work here or even choosing object transform scale and then repeatedly scaling the object. Neither is going to work. I'm just going to show you why. We'll go to the repeat transform tool because it's going to work exactly the same as the transform tool and they're both going to fail spectacularly. We're going to effect distort and transform transform. I'm going to scale out from the middle and let's say I want my 10 copies plus an original and I want each of them to be like 120% bigger than the previous one. So let's go to 120. And this is what's happening. What's happening is that these objects are just scaling up. So the one in the middle is our fixed starting size. And then this one is 120% bigger than this. So it's been increased by 20%. You can see that it doesn't look nice to start off with. It's much wider than it is tall. And so we've already broken up this sort of concentric concept. But worse than that, when we take this shape, this one is 120% of this one. So in actual fact, these are growing at an increased rate. So the actual dimensions are growing. So it's just way, way, way from what we want. Now, this is an appearance that we've just added to this. So I'm going to the appearance panel, which I seem to have lost. So let's go to window and then appearance. Here is the appearance that is making that transformation. And of course that's failed, so we're just going to drag it onto the trash can and let's look at a different solution. Now the object transform scale solution is going to have exactly the same issues as the transform effect, but there is a tool that will do it for us. And that is offset path. We'll go to object, path, and then offset path. 
And here we can offset the path by a number of pixels. So we're maintaining the shape, if you like, and we're just increasing the size by 14 pixels. I'll click OK. And now this offset path, this outside one is selected. So I can go to Object Path and then Offset Path and I get the next one. But I have to go to Path, Object Path every single time. If you wanted to create a whole series of these, then you could create an action. So to create an action, you're just going to go to Window and then Actions. Already created these, so I'm just going to hide these for now and let's go and create a new one. I'm just going to click plus to create a new action and this is going to be grow by 14 pixels. So the actual offset is going to be set in this action. You can't change it so you would need to determine how big a growth you want. So I'm just going to click record and now I'm going to record that command that we were using object path and then offset path. You can see that the 14 pixels is staying in the dialog here. So I'm just going to click OK and then I'll go and stop the action. So I'm just going to stop play recording and this grow by 14 pixel is now our action. So I can just sit here on the play button and just play it. And every time it's just going and adding another rectangle to our shape. And of course, these are nice and concentric. Now the action tool is going to help us not only because it worked really well here, but it's also going to solve a problem that we're going to have when we look at the rounded rectangle because things are going even more haywire there. So let's go and get the rounded rectangle. Let's go and create a rounded rectangle and let's go and run our action, the grow by 14 pixels. And let's do it a few times. And let's have a look and see what the problem is. Well, the problem is that these are not concentric because this corner, this rounded corner is getting flatter and flatter as it goes. These outer rounded rectangles are not really an expanded version or an enlarged version of the one in the middle. So let's get rid of all of them except the one in the middle. And let's go back and just run through how we're going to enlarge this and keep it looking correct. We're going to choose Object Path Offset Path because that works really well. It's just the corners are terrible. So I'll click OK. But if we have a look at this original shape, you'll see that the corner here is a 12 pixel corner. It's telling us up here on the toolbar. And what's happened with the next one is it's gone up to 26 pixels. But if we make that 12 pixels, then we're getting exactly what we want. The rectangle is actually enlarging at a nice pace. So with our shape selected, let's go and create a new action. So I'm going to call this Grow Rounded Rectangle by 14 pixels. I'll click Record. We'll go back and do our Offset Path. Object, Path, Offset Path. Click OK. And now with this outer shape selected because it's automatically selected, which really works in our favor, we're going to go up here to the toolbar and let's give it the same 12 pixel corner as the first shape had. And now that we've done that, we'll just click here to stop playing recording. And now we can go back and just continue to play this grow rectangle by 14 pixels, grow round a rectangle by 14 pixels, because every time we do, not only is that 14 pixel offset path being applied, but so too is this change of the corner from whatever it was back to 12 pixels. And so we've got nice evenly rounded corners. So there are some techniques for creating nested concentric shapes here in Illustrator. You just need to be aware of some of the tools you can use, in this case the Polar Grid tool, awesome tool. Here Offset Path works really nicely. Here Offset Path works just fine if we adjust the rounded corners. And by creating a action, a really quick simple action, we're able to create these shapes over and over again. And so let's create another different rounded rectangle. And if I go to Window and then Actions, I can just continually play this action and I'm getting all my rounded corners on it nice and neatly. So the time that it takes to record an action can actually save you a lot of time in actually creating these shapes. And of course, actions are reliable. It's always going to make that 12 pixel corner. Whereas if you were typing that by hand, you might make an error. Before we finish up, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. 
In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine will be better. I also have illustrator training at udemy.com and there's a referral link for every one of these courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends and co-workers. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and enjoyed learning how to make some concentric shapes here in Adobe Illustrator. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.